Hey everyone, it's Kelly with Confident Finance. Today I want to give you an overview of how to use Quicken for your rental properties. We'll walk through the main tabs under the rental property section, rent center, profit and loss, cash flow, and account overview. And I'll give you examples of how to use each one. I'm also going to be making future videos that go deeper into each tab and additional videos on setting up your first rental property, entering rent and expenses, and configuring tags. This video will be a high-level overview to get you familiar with the tools. Okay, when you click on the rental property tab, you'll see that it's broken down into several different sections. So think of this as your central hub for managing everything related to your rental business. So when you first click on the rental property tab in Quicken, it automatically opens to the rent center. At the top of the Rent Center, you'll notice two drop-down menus. The first one lets you choose whether you want to view all properties together or focus on a single property at a time. The second drop-down is for the date range. It defaults to current year, but you can easily switch it to month, last quarter, current quarter, or whatever time frame you want to analyze. Below that, you'll see a summary box with details like vacancies. For example, we've got a couple of vacancies right now, some from recent evictions and others where properties are being rehabbed. So Quicken helps us keep track of those situations right here. Now if I select one of the rows in the Rent Center, I can also enter a rent payment directly from here. This is really handy if a tenant hands you a check or pays electronically and you just want to log it quickly without opening anything else. Now, if I click on one of the properties, it opens the Edit Rental Property window. Here's where you can enter details about the property. We usually abbreviate the property name for anonymity, but you can put in the full name if you like. You can also enter the address, and choose whether it's a single unit or a multi-unit property. Down here you can track the value of your rental property. This is helpful for refinancing. If it's a multi-unit property, you'll see an area where you can set up each unit individually, which makes it easier to track tenants and rent payments separately. Under the Property Documents tab, you can attach documents like your lease, property deed, or other important documents. Finally, if we scroll down to the bottom under the totals area, you'll notice a series of icons. These represent things like vacant units, rent due, rent overdue, late payments, and lease end dates. You may see these icons pop up depending on the status of your properties, so it's helpful to know what they mean at a glance. I'll be making another video in the future where I'll dive deeper into the Rent Center and show you even more details about how it works. All right, next is the Profit and Loss tab. Here, Quicken organizes your income and expenses into a report that looks very similar to what an accountant would use. This helps you see how much profit your rental business is actually making, not just the rent coming in, but also the expenses going out, like repairs, mortgage interest, insurance, and other costs. For example, let's look at the month of July. Now here's a quick snapshot. Total income was $8,295. Total expenses were $6,495, which leaves a profit of $1,800. This makes it easy to understand where your money is coming from and going and it's especially useful for planning future budgets or preparing for those lovely taxes. The Profit and Loss tab also allows you to filter by property tag, so you can see detailed reports for a single property or a group of properties at a glance. This gives you flexibility in analyzing your rental business and helps identify trends or areas that may need attention. Quick tip, when I'm working in profit and loss or generating reports, I store all my Quicken files and financial data on a SanDisk SSD. It keeps everything organized, secure, and easy to access. 
I've linked it in the description if you want to check it out. I'm also going to be making another video where I'll dive deeper into profit and loss, showing more tips and tricks to fully leverage this tab for your rental business. Okay, next is the cash flow tab. This tab shows you the movement of money in and out of your rental accounts over a specific period, which helps you see whether you'll have enough funds to cover upcoming expenses. For example, let's look at July again. Here's a quick snapshot. The total inflow was $164,995. Total outflow was $155,053 which leaves $18,692 remaining. You might notice these numbers are higher than usual. That is because we sold a property this month to pay off some debt. This is a good example of how cash flow can fluctuate depending on one-time transactions or big events and why it's so important to track it closely. The cash flow tab also allows you to filter by property or account giving you a clear picture of your rental business's liquidity at any given time. I'll be making another video in the future where I'll go into more detail on cash flow, showing tips for managing inflows, outflows, and planning ahead for your rental business. All right, finally, let's look at the account overview. Now this section gives you a snapshot of all your rental property accounts in one place. It's a great way to see your overall financial position at a glance. The first section lists your rental property, spending, and savings accounts, where you track money coming in and out for day-to-day -day operations. And right below that, you'll see your credit card accounts for the rental business. Next, we have the rental property and debt accounts. Now this includes the equity in your units, as well as any escrow accounts you've set up for those properties. It gives you a clear picture of the value you have tied up in your rental properties. Below that, you'll see the rental property liabilities. These are loans against the properties, as well as any security deposits or last month's rent that you're holding for tenants. Technically, that's a liability for you until it's returned or applied. Finally, the rental property credit section is listed again here. Not exactly sure why Quicken shows the section twice, but it's worth noting that it appears so you can see credit balances related to your rentals. Again, there's a lot of information on this page, so I'm going to do an extended video covering account overview in more detail at a later date. All right, over on the far right of the rental property tab, you'll see three drop down menus. So let's briefly go through them. The first drop down allows you to enter rents and expenses. This is another way to quickly log incoming rent payments or any expenses related to your rental properties. The second drop down lets you add new properties and tenants which is perfect when you're expanding your rental business or bringing in a new tenant. And then the third dropdown gives you access to all kinds of reports related to your rental property business. This includes detailed financial reports, tax related summaries, and other analytics that can help you manage and grow your rentals. These dropdowns provide quick access to some of the most commonly used features in Quicken's rental property tools making it easier to manage your business efficiently. Again, this is just an overview. I'm going to do a more in-depth video on each of these options in the future. Now, in this video, I just wanted to give you the big picture overview of the rental property tab. I know there was a lot of information in there. So in upcoming videos, I'll be showing you how to set up your very first rental property in Quicken, use tags to organize income and expenses, record rent payments, and do deep dives into each of the tabs we just looked at. So if you want to learn step-by-step -step how to use Quicken to manage your rentals, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. All right, so that's it for this overview of the rental property tab in Quicken. Hopefully it gives you a good starting point and a clear picture of what's possible. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and check the description for my full Quicken tutorial playlist along with affiliate links where you can get discounts on Quicken. 
And again, this is Kelly with Confident Finance. Until next time, keep getting confident in your finances.